<clears throat> Hello, everyone. This week's Torah portion is called Balak. And it tells the amazing story of a, um, a king that uh, hired a master cursor. He knew how to curse his, it, with curses more powerful than a million atomic bombs and that he had used his curses before to curse the Jews. And, and the Jews, in fact, deserved to be cursed. The Jews had done several things that really got mad. Got mad. And um, but it was impossible for him. He couldn't do it. And they end up, in the end, God's love for the Jews uh, forced him to bless the Jews. And among them all, of the amazing blessings that he gave are the blessings about Mashiach. <clears throat> so, the, even Maimonides, which is a pure, cut and dry law book, uses the prophecies of Bilam to tell us about Mashiach and the certainty that Mashiach is supposed to come. And Mashiach will be a person like King David. In fact, Mashiach that we're waiting for is the second coming. The first coming was King David. And the second coming is going to be the Mashiach, Ben David. And he's going to arouse all the Jews to do the Torah and the commandments and to bring all the Jews back to Israel. But interestingly enough, we see that the situation today is, seems to be as the furthest of all from Mashiach as possible. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe says, no, it's not so. In fact, the Lubavitcher Rebbe says that now we are closer to Mashiach than ever before. So how does this reconcile itself? Well, one way is that it says right before Mashiach comes that all of the bad in the world will be revealed. All the bad in the world will be revealed. So up to now, it wasn't so clear what is bad and really what is good. I mean, Hitler, for instance, hated the Jews, and he started killing Jews. He made the Nuremberg Laws, and nobody said anything. But when he started attacking all these other nations, so then everyone said we have to uh, protect ourselves. But essentially, the German people had a lot of good qualities to them. They were very scientific. They were very progressive, and etc. But when they started with the Jews, nobody really cared. It didn't make any difference to them, to the world. But now in our generation, we're seeing a very surprising thing, as that is that the enemies of the Jews are totally empty people that have never done anything good, ever. They have nothing, no science, no medicine, no philosophy, no just pure evil, the Hamas. And the whole world supports them. Pure evil for the sake of evil. On the other hand, the Jews have done a lot for the world, and the Jews are God's people. The Jews have done a lot just in the way of being God's people. They brought the Torah to the world. They brought right and wrong to the world. And the Hamas only brought destruction to the world. And their whole platform is that they want to continue doing destruction. That's their whole, how do you say, their, 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 their constitution. That they want to destroy the Jews. They want to destroy. That's all they're really good at. So we see a very interesting thing that's happening now in the world is that evil is pure evil. There's no logic to it anymore. Right. And everyone says that the Jews are doing a, a Holocaust over there, but there's absolutely no proof for that whatsoever, nothing whatsoever. A few drawings, a few pictures that show absolutely nothing. And by us, there's all these pictures that the, the, the Hamas did. They saw how they raped and they killed and they murdered. So we see that now people are supporting evil just for the sake of evil. But I want to suggest something a little bit, a little bit maybe more biblical. And that is, let's have a look here. There's a sentence in the Torah that says like this. So you see this Torah? Here, here I am. Put this over in the corner. And there's a sentence. What does the sentence say? This is right near the end of the book of, of Deuteronomy, right near the end of the Torah. And there is a song which Moses brings to the Jewish people in what's called Ha'azinu. Ha'azinu ha'shamayim v'adabera. Here, see? Ha'azinu ha'shamayim v'adabera. Listen, heavens, and I will speak, and etc. And it says what's going to be in the future, how the Jews are going to make God angry and etc. You're going to forget God, but nevertheless, God will forgive you. Okay, so here's what an amazing sentence. What does it say? It says like this. Ready? Here we go. Oh. They have provoked me. They made me mad. The Jews made me mad with a no God. With no God. They have made me, how do you say, my aroused my anger with their emptiness. 
So God said, I'm going to let them have it. What they did to me, I'm going to do to them. I'm going to make them also angry with a no, non-nation, with a disgusting people, I will make them angry. So they said that God doesn't exist. So I'm going to send them a people that don't exist. What's the people don't exist? So we see a very interesting thing that's happening now today. And I think that's the problem and that's the solution. And the Jews are not called Jews. The Jews are called Semites. The problem in the world now is anti-Semitism. What's a Semite? Go in any place you want to in the world and say, excuse me, can you tell me where the Semites are? Nobody knows what you're talking about. What's oh, a Semite? The Jews have made themselves into a non-entity. The idea of Zionism is we're going to be like a people like every other people, and we're not. We're not a people like every other people. The fact of the matter is that Jews are Am Kadosh, they're a holy nation. And the fact that we're a holy nation, that's our right to Israel. It's called the Holy Land. Holiness means alive. And if the Jews say that we're not Jews, we're just Israelis. So the world says, okay, so you're not Jews, you know, you're Semites. You're Semites. And hating Jews is called anti-Semitism. Is really true. On the other hand, we have the Palestinians. They are a non-nation. There never was a country called Palestine. It was a thing that was created by the Zionists, what, 40 years ago, whatever it was. They never had a flag. They never had a, a country. They never had a president. They never had an anthem. They never had a coin. They never had a government. They had absolutely no identity whatsoever. And that's, everybody says, no, they're the real identity. The land of Israel, it belongs to them. They don't even call Israel Israel anymore, right? They call it Israel is called Palestine. So here we have a non-nation Palestinians, which don't really exist. There's no such thing as Palestinians. There never was. And they claim to come from a land which is called Palestine, which there is no nation like that. There is no nation. And that's what it says. I will send to them a low am. It says, where is it? Ani akniem below am. I will anger the Jews with a non-nation. Let's see if I can get my pointer over here. Here we go. Oh, pointer. Here. There we go. With a low, without a nation. And we can also say that that's what the Jews have done also. They have made themselves into a non nation. So God says, I will make you into a non nation. The Jews say, We're not the nation of God. So I say, Okay, I'll send you a nation that they're not even a nation of reality. They didn't even exist. What's the solution to the whole business? It says, The problem was, is because we angered God with a no God. The Jewish people do not believe in Hashem. And they don't do Hashem's commandments. And the solution to the whole problem is the Jews should start doing the commandments. You want to fight against the Hamas, which they're a non-entity? So you become God's entity. Do a commandment. Uh, you can say, what good is that possibly going to do? I'll go out in the streets and I'll make a sign. I'll make a protest. It's maybe that will effect, have an effect on the non-Jews, but it won't. You see that the United Nations, they support the, the Hamas. And they have absolutely no logic behind it, why they should do it. So our answer is, is, forget about what the world says. We have to think about what God says. We have to become God's nation. Am Kadosh, a holy nation. And then the land of Israel will become our holy land. And maybe I can just throw in a little thing in the end that I want to tell myself. It says over here, it says, the, I, I, I will make them angry, but goy Novel Achisem, with a disgusting nation, I will make them angry. The Jews make them angry. Now, if you take the numerical value of the word Achisem, and you Achisem, I'm sorry, and you take out the yud, you don't really need the yud over here. Achisem. In order to pronounce it, you can pronounce it e, e, e without the yud. So it comes out to be the gematria of 191. 191 is Achisem. And if you add two more, goy, navel, naval, then that comes out two more. That's 193. What's 193? The number of nations that are in the United Nations is 193. So goy, naval, a disgusting nation, I will anger them, is talking about all the 193 nations which are in the United Nations. As the Rebbe said, 70 wolves against one sheep. One sheep is the Jews. How can we defeat them? So the answer is, 
cling to the creator. The creator creates them. We're infinitely more real than any of the nations. We're infinitely more powerful than any all of the nations put together. We're connected to the creator of everything. So because we decided to make a, that we're a nation without God below Kale, so God sent us a nation which is not a nation, a non-nation. Do a commandment. One commandment. Ladies, light Shabbos candles. You can't do it every Shabbos. Begin slowly. Do it once a month, once a year. Start off small, but increase. The goal is, is that you see the beautiful reality of serving the creator of the universe and the beautiful message that we have to the world, that God loves everyone and he creates everyone. And the world is a world of life, not the world of death. Then the whole entire world will realize that Hashem is one. They'll drop all the religions. There won't be one Arab that believes in the Quran. There won't be one non-Jew that believes in the Gospels. They'll realize that it's just total lies, like it says in Isaiah and in, 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 in Jeremiah 16, 19, look it up, that the non-Jews will realize that all the religions are lies. The holy temple will come into the Israel, into Israel from heaven, Mikdash Hashem Koraniadecha. All the Jews will be gathered, but it depends on us doing all we can to prepare ourselves for this big surprise of the Holy Temple. And that's what the Re Lubavitcher Rebbe, who he is the Melech HaMashiach, is preparing the world for. Do another commandment. Learn a little more Torah. Pray to God that the world should be a good place, and it will be a good place with Mashiach now.